Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Today we're going to talk about good and bad vocal recordings. A couple weeks ago I did a video on good and bad acoustic guitar recordings that people seem to really like, so we're going to keep that idea rolling and talk about vocals today. But instead of going back and pulling out old vocal recordings of mine and comparing them to more recent ones, I thought it would be more helpful to showcase some common vocal recording mistakes that people tend to make. I've Today was a weird day for me. I sat in here and recorded a bunch of vocals badly to demonstrate each of these mistakes. We can listen to them, listen to the differences, and then talk about how the mistake was made and how we can avoid those mistakes in the future. And at the end, I've got a comparison between a good vocal and a bad vocal with a surprising twist of an ending, so stick around for that. All right, so there are a lot of ways to mess up a vocal, but in some ways you could say vocals aren't that hard as long as you don't make some of these big mistakes. So the first mistake, is should be the first thing first mistake that you avoid no matter what you're recording and that is simply don't clip now I've got an over-the-top example for you where I just clipped the crap out of my preamp which means I just turned the gain up on the preamp all the way and then sang hold your ears the world is not the way it's supposed to be Okay, so that example is a little exaggerated because there's a good chance you probably wouldn't go that far, but that's what clipping sounds like. And you might initially think, oh, that's a cool distorted sound. And it kind of is, but listen to this quieter part on the end. Amen. It's this digital clipping, right? The converter's clipping, the preamp's clipping. It's kind of this sparkly in a bad way sort of sound. Uh, don't like that at all. If you want to do this for like an effect or a special part of a song, maybe, but let's, let's listen to a more realistic sound. So here is more, uh, common case of clipping where the whole thing's not clipped. The whole thing's not a rectangle. If you look at the waveform, but the louder notes are, and it's comes from people trying to turn the gain up as loud as they can without clipping. And then inevitably the singer will sing louder than they did during sound check and you'll end up with clipping and so the louder parts will have some distortion and the quieter parts will sound okay the world is not the way it's supposed to be but change is coming so how can you know if you're clipping? Well, first of all, the clip light will go off. Your interface probably has a red light that goes off. Your software should have red lights going off. Pay attention to those. The solution is just turn it down. It doesn't need to be loud going in to have a nice loud vocal later. We have tools for that. We'll talk about that in another video about mixing. Also, if you look at the waveform, like right here, see how this waveform is completely rectangular? The tops and bottoms are clipped off. It's literally what happens. The waveform got clipped. It got a crew cut, buzz right off the top. And you can even see on this quieter section right here, See this waveform there? When you zoom in, you can't see it, but when you zoom out, you can see even this quieter note kind of got chopped off. You can see it right there. Listen to it. Is coming. It had a little buzz to it. That's what happens. Uh, and this final phrase did not get clipped at all. But who cares? Because the other, all the other phrases had some form of clipping to them. That's no bueno. All right, the next mistake is getting too close to the microphone. If you get really close to the mic, I'm talking like lips touching the grate while you're singing, probably too close. A couple of bad things happen when you get too close to the microphone. Now, I'm not saying don't get kind of close, just not right up on it. Uh, first thing that'll happen is there'll be boominess. When you're that close to a mic, it picks up a lot of boomy low end, and you don't need that in a vocal. Warmth, yes. Boominess, no. Second thing that happens is this weird science thing where if you double the distance of a microphone to a source, it cuts the volume in half. So if my lips are right on the microphone, and I understand these are headphones and not a microphone, but I didn't want to do it on that one because that's the one you're listening to. If I put my lips this close to the mic, and then I move back for a little bit for one note, guess what? I just like quintupled the, diff the distance from my mouth to the microphone, which means the volume's gonna cut in half a couple of times. And you can kind of see that in this waveform here. So I'm gonna play this one for you, listen to the boominess of the vocal, and listen to the ups and downs of the volume, because I moved around like a normal human would when singing, and that made a huge difference in distance, which made the volume jump up and down more unnecessarily than it had to. And finally, it was just really awkward to be that close to the mic. The world is not the way it's supposed to be, but change is coming, amen. 
didn't sound as terrible as I thought it would, but there was even a little bit of what maybe sounded like clipping of the actual mic element itself. If I'm right up on the mic versus maybe four or five inches away, that's a big difference in volume that the mic is having to accept. And I think a little bit on that, that loud note there, I think a little bit of that was clipping or some sort of mild distortion from just that element getting so much volume so close to it. All right, the next mistake that people tend to make is recording too far. You might say, I don't want to get too close. I saw a picture of Frank Sinatra singing like this, and the microphone was here. I'm going to try that. Well, I'm all for trying things, but there's a problem. Even if your room is fairly treated, it's not going to work. Here's what that sounds like. The world is not the way it's supposed to be, but change is coming. Now you can make the case for using something like that for you're trying to go for a lumineer sound and everybody's singing from across the room and going, hey, and that's something. But typical lead vocal, that's not going to work, especially if you start adding like compression to the signal. That extra room sound is going to be even more loud and obnoxious. And just so you know, I wasn't over there. I was literally just an arm's length away, like maybe that far away from the mic, and it picked up so much more extra room sound. Now, could I use a little more treatment in this room? Sure, but as you'll see in the final good vocal, uh, this you can get a nice, clean, quiet vocal by just getting the right distance from the microphone, which means not too close, but certainly not too far. All right, the next mistake, and this is one, it seems obvious, but if you, nobody told you, there's no reason you should know, and that is not using a pop filter. You know what a pop filter is? It's pantyhose stretched over a piece of metal or a hanger. So you could make one yourself. I mean, if given you have pantyhose lying around, but this is it. And it goes in front of the mic and it's literally, the name gives it away. It's meant to stop the pops from my vocal gig into the mic. Listen to this recording. Overall, the vocal recording sounds good, but you can see where all the magic happens here and here and here. There's just a burst of wind from my lungs that just jacks up the microphone. This is especially true on condenser mics. The world is not the way it's supposed to be, but change is coming. I get that in a live sound environment, typically the singer is right up on the mic and you'll get some of those plosives and you have to deal with that. We're in a studio. We don't have to do that. Um, so if... If you get even a this distance away, like a good, you know, five to eight inches away, if you're singing directly towards the microphone, this is going to help. You're going to get those plosives and you can't deal with them later. You can try with all your might to edit them out, to EQ them out. They're going to be there and I'm going to hear them in the mix. I'm going to be angry because you didn't record with a pop filter like I told you to. But I will say, sometimes I record vocals like this. I'm talking to you right now and if I go, it doesn't hit the microphone because it's a little off to the side pointed at my mouth. So I will sing vocals that way. So if you don't have a pop filter and you don't have pantyhose lying around, just don't point your mouth directly at the microphone. Point it off axis a little bit. It'll still pick you up. You can still get nice and close, but you won't pop the mic that way. Next mistake is too much processing. Maybe you have an external channel strip that has EQ and compression, or you got a mixer like my Studio Live here that lets you add EQ and compression on the way in. Be careful. You can always add plugins later. You can't remove that junk if you put it on there on the way in and you messed it up. Here's what it sounds like. It's not the worst sound in the world, but you can hear it's been overprocessed. The world is not the way it's supposed to be. And you can tell that just by looking at this waveform, you can tell somebody got happy with a compressor. And you can see the compressor is acting right here. Right there, well, it's not acting there, it's acting right after. So that big peak right there is right before the compressor clamped down. And if you don't like that exact amount of sound, you can't take it out later. And more compression just will make it worse. So if you don't want this in your recordings, the Man, that th is just the loudest thing ever. You could maybe try to edit this out, but why? Why give? Why put yourself through all of that? Just ease up on the compressor, or maybe just don't use compression for a season until you're really comfortable with how to use it in such a way that the recording still sounds good and it isn't obvious that you compressed it. All right, now for the main event. I recorded two vocals for you here. One is good and one is bad. Or at least that's what I thought was gonna happen. So I recorded the first one using all the tips we've talked about right here with this microphone. By the way, this is a Roswell Mini K47, $300 mic through the stock preamps on my board. Nothing crazy, nothing expensive here. So I got the pop filter out, I positioned it, and I was literally about right here 
or so, about five to eight inches away, and I sang the green track that you see in front of you labeled good. Then I moved the microphone to the next room over, which we're using as like a kid's playroom. It has no carpet, nothing on the walls. It is just a bare room with a lot of room sound, and I recorded right in the middle of the room with the same microphone plugged into the same channel, pop filter, the whole deal. I expected the room mic to be just awful, just terrible. Turns out it wasn't as terrible as I expected. And a part of me said, oh, I can't use this in the video. They'll laugh at me. But the other part of me said, no, this is actually good information. It's kind of like Mythbusters. Here was my hypothesis. That hypothesis wasn't exactly true. Let's listen so I can show you what I'm talking about. So here's the raw vocal, the good vocal first. The world is not the way it's supposed to be. But change is coming. Amen. And here is the bad vocal with too much room. The world is not the way it's supposed to be. But change is coming. Amen. So unless you're listening on headphones, and even then, the room was surprisingly hard to hear. Why is that? Well, I was only about five inches away from the mic, so the sound of my voice to the microphone was way louder than any sound in the room. That's kind of cool. But what happens if we mix this? That's where the room sound can sometimes come out. Let's add some compression. So I added this uh, tube compressor here. Added the same settings to both vocal tracks, normalized them at the same volume, and then let's hear what that sounds like. The world is not the way it's supposed to be, but change is coming. Amen. Now the bad. The world is not the way. It's supposed to be, but change is coming, amen. Did you hear it? The way the compressor was interacting with the vocal, it actually created what sounds like a slapback delay on the vocal, especially on the louder parts. Listen to it again. When the compressor kind of starts to let go, you hear the room sound come up just like a slapback. The world is not the way. You hear that? Between after the word not and the word way. The world is not the way. Very interesting. So I was sitting here getting ready to be all arrogant and egocentric and say, you have to sing in a treated room. Turns out on this particular song where I was singing pretty loudly, being relatively close to the mic, not too close, but relatively close to the microphone was good enough. Now, I would still prefer this other one because maybe I don't want that sort of roomy slapback delay and maybe on different songs it wouldn't work as well, but I was pleasantly surprised with that. That was not the worst of the recordings we heard today, arguably best or second best. Um, now, what would I do with this vocal moving forward? Well, the thing is, it just needs to sound like the voice. Am I super happy with that performance? No, it's a little nasal. I don't love the way I sang it. it probably because I sang it 18 times today trying to record this. Um, but once the compression comes in and the EQ comes in, it starts to sound like a finished mix and a finished song. It doesn't have those big issues. If anything, it's a little jumpy here in volume. Compression handles that. There's a little mid-range when I sing louder. I usually always do kind of a narrow EQ to EQ that out. Um, but the raw material is there. Those things I can fix in the mix, but the other things we talked about Clipping, being too close, being too far, having no pop filter and too much processing, we really can't fix those. Some are a little more fixable than others. Heavy clipping, no chance. Pop filter, not really going to fix it. Too far, probably not going to fix that one. Too close, you could maybe get away with. Um, too much processing, it's baked in. There's just nothing you can do about it. But just pray that it works in the mix. And you won't know until everything else is done. All right, that's it for good and bad vocal recording for today. Uh, that song, by the way, if you want to just hear the whole song so it's not stuck in your head with just that one line, it's a song called Amen, as in Amen, uh, by me, Joe Gilder. Go check it out on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. And I might make like a third of a cent or something, so...
Can't put a price on that. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about mixing, I've got a free guide. If you haven't checked it out yet, you definitely need to. Just go to, what is it, 5stepmix.com. Uh, it's a free PDF guide, quick read. You could read it in one sitting, and it'll give you a framework in which to apply some of these techniques that I show you here on YouTube. Uh, it's great to know these things, but once it's time to mix, what comes first? Do I do drums first or vocals first, or do I add plugins now, or do I wait? And when do I know when I'm finished? That will help explain all of that to you. So check it out at 5stepmix.com. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. And I'll see you next week.